Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new episode of the MSP Network and the Industry Shakers episodes and interviews. Today, I have the pleasure to welcome Josh Redmore. And if not mistaken, you are Principal Architect at Cable Labs. Hello, Josh. Right. How are you? Doing great. Always a pleasure to speak to you. Same here. Same here. We have some good and interesting questions for you today and looking forward to a very interesting discussion. Before I forget, for those that haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please hit that subscribe button, like, share. The Our YouTube channel has been growing crazy from 200 to 1,000 in three months. So it seems like you folks are liking the content. All right. So let's start with the first question. Uh, what are the main programs Cable Labs is working on in this year and next year? Sure. So I'll start off with a more general case. We're, we've implemented what we were calling our tech vision, and it's really defining key themes and focus areas that will guide our innovations over the next decade. As an example of that, you know, when we first added Wi-Fi to a cable modem, that was enough. It was just, okay, it's got Wi-Fi, checkbox. And then we entered the speed era. Well, okay, we want Wi-Fi, but we want fast Wi-Fi. So we've done a great job at, you know, getting up into the multi-gigabit speeds. But customers realize that that's not the thing that they want. So we're now in the experience era. They want to make sure that when they use our internet services, that it's seamless, it's quick. It does everything they need to, hopefully without ever having to think about Wi-Fi. That's sort of the ultimate goal is never think about Wi-Fi. You just use the services on the internet that you want to. And specifically as an example of that, actually just a few hours ago, the IEEE's BN task group unanimously approved the inclusion of 4S into the spec for what will become Wi-Fi 8. L4S enables end-to-end -end low latency. And this is something that my colleagues at Cable Labs have been working on for, for years to get adoption. So really, really exciting news out of the IEEE about that. And that's going to, low latency is one of the, the, the cornerstones to that good customer experience. Yeah, actually, I'm going to have Robert Stacy, chair of the Excellent. Excellent 11, as one of my future guests. So looking forward to deep, dive deeper into this. Okay, so any other programs you want to talk about? Sure, we're also doing a lot of work in seamless connectivity. You know, your your phone has multiple networks available, as an example. We've all had that experience where maybe I'm on cellular when I should be on Wi-Fi. Maybe I've left the house and my phone's still trying to be on Wi-Fi when it should be on cellular. So we're looking at a lot of different ways to, to make that invisible to the user, to make that network selection happen automatically, seamlessly, without interruption to your services. So you'll never have to think about what am I connected to? Should I be connected to something better? Yeah. All right. That's obviously very interesting in terms of conversions between cellular oh, and yes. and you know, all the good stuff. Any other pressing pain points regarding Wi-Fi? You know, sort of in general, it's, again, it goes back to experience. It's about optimizing that experience for the user, really letting them get the true value out of what's being deployed in their homes. Okay. Now, obviously, this episode is sponsored by Ybuzz, you know, who provide a single pane of glass. And, you know, there's a whole movement around open source and, you know, and enabling companies to, you know, deploy the software that they, they, they need. When you hear Wi-Fi vendor lock-in, what, what comes mm. to your mind? Yeah. So through through our members, we at Cable Ops, we represent half a billion internet users. And to think that you can have one specific access point and one specific radio and one specific analytics engine, and that works for everybody is just ridiculous. So our members need the flexibility to service the greatly varied markets they have. You know, we have we have members in South America, Europe, all over the planet that everything is different for these people. So being able to use all the tools in your toolbox is critical. And previously, if you wanted to deploy a managed Wi-Fi solution, which is the best Wi-Fi, then you need, I'm going to buy a specific proprietary agent and put it on a specific box and have a specific cloud controller and that's it. That's all I can do. Uh, and if you wanted to do something outside of that, you're you're bringing up an entirely separate system or you're trying to shoehorn something in that doesn't work. So vendor lock-in is really a, a restriction on the access to the bits that you need to, to really optimize your network. 
So what are you doing about it? Well, standards work and open source work. Those are the fundamentals. If you can standardize the collection of metrics, the transport of metrics, then you'll be able to use whichever device you want. They'll all be speaking the same language. And certainly open source efforts go a long way to, to help this as well by letting everybody contribute to something that everybody can benefit from. Yeah. Hey there, Magnus Johansson, CEO at Ybus. Thanks again for joining us for another fascinating conversation. For the past 10 years, we've quietly powered managed Wi-Fi solutions for 10 of America's biggest telcos. If you use branded Wi-Fi from AT&T, Frontier, or Optimum, chances are you experienced our tech already. Now we're stepping out from behind the scenes, bringing this proven platform directly to MSPs like you. If vendor lock-in, rigid roadmaps, rising costs and growing complexity are holding your MSP hostage, you're not alone. 72% of MSP CEOs are right there with you. Here is your way out. YBIP OS, our open source vendor agnostic OS built specifically for MSPs Think of it as your Android moment, restoring your strategic control and agility. One intuitive dashboard to manage your tech stack? Done. Legacy enterprise Wi-Fi running seamlessly alongside next generation open Wi-Fi? Absolutely. Reduce your R&D costs by at least 30% immediately. Embedded live SDK engineers for rapid customization? Yes, on demand and ready to go. So are you feeling ready for a transformational freedom? Then visit ybus.com or scan the QR code to book a one-on-one -on -one with me. And in just 15 minutes, let's onboard your MSP for a game-changing POC. Stop reselling someone else's vision. Forge your legacy with Ybus. See you soon. Which is a good segue to my next question about tip open Wi-Fi. Sure. Uh, what can you tell us about how your members perceive it, test it, are they playing with it? Yeah. So we've, Cable Labs, we've been members of TIP for many years, including the Open Wi Fi program. You know, I've personally run multiple lab trials with Open Wi Fi gear, and it's, it, it's really amazing to see a table full of different vendor access points talking to multiple different cloud controllers seamlessly. Um, you know, you'll have your, your wall mounted AP next to a strand mounted AP from another vendor, and they're both able to be controlled the same exact way, configured the same way. So I, I think that represents a, a massive lowering of a barrier to entry to deploying managed Wi-Fi that I think is appealing for a lot of our members. You know, I certainly can't speak on what our members are going to do directly with open Wi-Fi, but again, it's about having those tools in the toolbox. We, yeah. we like to see the options available and we think open Wi-Fi is a, is a good one. Did you see any obstacles or issues with deep open Wi-Fi that may slow down the adoption or create no, no, I don't see any obstacles. It's uh, it's been the the adoption the deployments that have happened have been very successful. It's been kind of a slow up ramp as people understand the the benefits of deploying it. So no, no real obstacles. Just uh, I like to see the progression happen, and they've they've been very good at adopting new Mac Fi's as they come along. You know, when Wi-Fi seven came out, there were instantly seven devices available. I expect that to continue in the future. And when six gigahertz was available, same thing there. Okay, great. So again, same discussion, but more about the general concept of a single pane of glass. You know, what does that mean to you to have for your members a single pane of glass? Yeah, so we have you know, our members deploy multiple networks. That's, you know, the M and MSO, right? We have, they're deploying mobile networks now. They have their wired networks, Doxis and Fiber. We have Wi Fi on top of that. And all of these networks are pulling data in on what's happening. And you can really only say, oh, this customer is having a good experience or bad experience if I know everything that happened from the wired side through the wireless side or through the mobile side. If you can put all that together, that's, that's where the real value comes. So having that single pane of glass is is important for that, for the aggregation of data. It is very dependent, again, on standards. If you can't, if whatever your single pane of glass is can't speak to these different things, then it's pointless. You have multiple systems and you have to deal with multiple systems and all the downsides of that. So where we are now in terms of single pane of glass being becoming a reality for your members? Yeah, I think it's sort of progressing the same way managed Wi-Fi did where 
we had proprietary ways of doing a single pane of glass. You know, somebody will brute force an API on top of, you know, an access point controller or whatever it is, and they can do a lot of massaging of data to build that. But with the standardization of these these data transports and models, that's becoming more open. It's it's a lot easier for that single pane of glass software to be written. Yeah. Before I jump to my la last question, you know, we haven't spoken about AI. Sure. Uh, that would be complete without mentioning AI. <laughs> you, you, know, you can't yeah, can't have a conversation without AI. Absolutely. Right. Do you have like a specific project on AI or working group on AI or and what problems that AI would solve? Yeah. So the it's funny, the the work that we've done over the years, especially in programs like the Wi-Fi Alliance Data Elements program, they are all around making large piles of data. And AI is great at dealing with large piles of data. I mean, that's, that's, that's what makes AI work is you have these big training models. So there's really a natural progression for the analytics of Wi-Fi to benefit from AI just because of the sheer volume of data that, that we've been creating and capturing. So while I can't speak to the specific things we're working on there, it's, I think you can imagine that progression. Okay. Fair enough. Then I'll be very curious to know what you guys are working on at some point. Sure. And then final question, if you could have a magic wand, what technology service would you add for your members to be more successful? Yeah. So we spoke about where we're at with the experience era and we're looking at what's coming next and that's the adaptive era. And that's where I really want to get us to. My magic wand use would basically to make Wi-Fi perfectly self-optimizing. It would probably put me out of a job, but that's that's really sort of the goal is to make Wi-Fi absolutely perfect 100% of the time, coordinated, optimal spectrum usage, ease of onboarding, uh, just everything. Just you don't have to think about it. It just works. That's that's my magic wand use. Works and is secure. Abs of course. Of course. Yes. All right. Well, that's all for today, folks. Uh, thanks, Josh, for sharing your insights with us today. Yeah. I know Happy we're going to see each other next week at the Wireless Global Congress by the WBA. Thanks for to Ibus for sponsoring this series of interviews. On, on, on the other side, you can see subscribe to our newsletter. So please do that. And until the next episode, thank you very much. Thank you.